is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Well, folks, this is uh, six minutes past two Eastern time, uh, and we're looking at, uh, and this is uh, the hour that we're filling in here. Uh, so we're looking at the Dow, uh, which is down 237. The S&P is down 25. But what I wanted to show was this. Here's the uh, one-minute E-mini. This is the S&P E-mini. And you can see, you see look, at, look at this particular instance right here on the left. And forget about the letters and the travel wave methodology. Just look at the MAGD, the moving average, convergence, divergence. Look how wide the distance is from the green line. That's a nine-period differential to the 26-period uh, exponential moving average, the red one. Look how this, the MACD um, is at this particular point right here. It's, that's the high. Look at the way the on-balance volume, the blue line, made a V-shaped turnaround. Right, let me just check to see if it was right at that exact moment. So that was the uh, first high. Yes, yeah, right at that first leg, E has a, the parallel high of four, uh, 41. Uh, let me just check what it is, 41.53. Very next bar, one minute bar is 41.53. And look at the stochastic is holding beautifully up in the, uh, let me just check what it is here. The, oh, the stochastic is in the 92% area, all right? That's fantastic. So let me just move it to the right. So here we are. Everything looks great. Leg E. Now keep this in mind. Here's your picture that you want to be looking at. On balance volume is a little bit overbought and turns around. This gray line is a relative strength, all very strong. Have a look at this chart here. This is, oh, I didn't mean to do that. This is the VIX index. I was going to talk about that. There was some mention about the VIX index. I was going to talk about it, and I will, I will talk about it. But let's just go back to, well, it's almost like, here we go, INDU. So here's the Dow as we're talking right now. This is your leg D. It made a new high, so it's still a leg D. In the Chapman Wave, we identify the, the lowest bar and then count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. You can see there on the way down. Um, the idea is to go from a buy signal as the technicals improve, in, increases to a buy mode. It says there should. I've been talking about this for two weeks now, actually more, for about three weeks, saying we should get a leg D. We've got a buy mode in place for the Dow Daily. There should be at least four higher peaks. It should go to leg D and then a peak D. So wait a minute, where are we? Look at the MACD. Look how strong it is. Look at the stochastic flat at 92%. Look at the on-balance volume, making this little double top like a little M-shaped pattern, right? And pulling back as the as the price is pulling back. Look how strong the nine period is over the, the black 14 period exponential moving average. And look at the price still way above. Wait a minute. Why are you showing us this? Because look what happened. Everything was just perfect over there. The difference is from the previous high, that high right there at about noon, uh, was that, when, when was that? Uh, that was at 12.03 this, this, this afternoon. From that high, this E is a little bit lower and that says you've got to be a little bit careful. Why? So it took one bar of a parallel high, then one bar with a red, Chapman Wave red, um, this is called a Roman candle. I don't want to go into it now. In my Tiger Technicians Hour, I'll discuss it next week. That's 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And then there was this huge red candle. But wait a minute, the nine is still, look how positive it is. Look at the MACD, it's only turning down. It hasn't crossed negative. Look at the stochastic is now just turning down to 90%. On balance volume went even higher and then it turned down. Wait a minute. Look what happened the next two, three bars. You saw the, the nine start to, the green nine period moving average sharply lower. Hasn't yet crossed negative, but it's touching the 14 period moving average. The MACD has crossed negative in such a short period of time, and the stochastic has plummeted way below 80%. So that's the thing. That's what would have to happen here for the Dow to reverse, to go from a sell, a signal which is not even in, it's still in the buy mode, 
to then to inaugurate a cell signal and then up, upgrade it to a cell mode. And then this, look what happened here. Nine cross negative, and then you got your left side, right side bar symmetry, and you went bam, right there. Try to bounce, made an arch formation, retested successfully, then went peak A. The MACD turns around up. The stochastic is starting to rally. The stochastic is much higher on this retest than it was there. That's a big positive. The on balance volume turns around sharply, and now we get peak A, peak B, peak C, and lo and behold, you get your D, and then it stalls with a double top at D. So wait a minute. How does that apply? Well, this is what we're looking at. The Dow at this particular point has pulled back. It is still within this big green candle of yesterday. What would... What would it take? And this is the question I, I was asked just before I, I got off the air from my show this morning at 11. It just went so quick. I didn't even realize I was in the very last segment of the, of the show. <clears throat> so I never had a chance to answer two questions. And I'll get to both those que three questions, actually. So the three questions was, what's the relationship uh, of, the, of the stochastic MACD on balance volume 914 move crossover um, to the price and here I'm going to tell you what it is. You see, in this particular instance, we've got from this low right here, this is the low of uh, the 15th of March. If you go left side, right side, parallel, that's bar symmetry, you, today would be the, the day, the last, uh, was it today or yesterday? Uh, that's that's 17. Yeah, so today, today would have been the last day. So you've run out of energy to the upside in terms of getting to the symmetry of the way down from that peak D, and look at the look at the negativity here, peak D at 34,331 in the Dow on the 14th of Feb, and yet the the, the MACD was good, but it was starting to fail already when it went to the D, it was already failing. The stochastic went back under 80 percent. The unbalanced volume turned down. The technicals were really negative. That's not the case here. The technical is already strong. So it'll take at least into next week for such such bad news to drag the Dow uh, towards the 33,500s, maybe even lower, to start to get all that negativity with the MACD turning down, the stochastic going under um, 87%, not even under 80%. It'll take an even a deeper decline for you to do that. So it could be time. Or it could be just a sudden bad news where there's a, a one-day washout with a down, down 800 or 900 points. That would do it. But at this particular point, there are three things we're looking at. One is that the technicals are still really good in the Dow chart and the daily. The weekly chart got repelled to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there, to the almost to the penny. The high today is 34,082, and then it got turned down, and now the price is holding on the pink line. And the pink line is the bottom of the inside track repellent zone. So this makes it really important. And the weekly, the monthly chart is the same thing. So I want to apply the technicals because I, I know a lot, a lot more people now over the years have been using Chapman Wave methodology. And then there are a couple of questions that they, uh, I, I try to answer during the show. But at the same time, uh, I don't want to make it too complicated. At this point, we've probably got people that have not watched the Chapman Wave methodology at all, maybe. And now I'm just saying to you, try to identify the lowest low bar. If it's a start to rally and gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, you should expect at least four higher peaks to peak D. This is still leg D. If there's no new high above 34,082 on Monday, that makes a peak B, a peak D. That doesn't mean to say you got a sell signal. It just says finally you got your D. Then you reassess. I'll be back. The Dow is down 213. SP down 21. Basil Chapman, I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so it's a good battle chapter here, and this is the uh, two, uh, two eighteen p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, what a hot day here in Boston! Unbelievable. It was over ninety degrees. I actually slipped out earlier on after my show to uh, play uh, outside a, a game of tennis, a Canadian, the three of us, and woo hoo hoo! It was hot. Anyway, um, got back just in time to see that there was an opening, and I decided I've done everything that I need to do for the week. I'm ready to do a little bit of uh, analysis. Uh, live and here we are. So this is part of the techniques that I teach as well in my webinars. Um, there's a rectangle, a narrow rectangle, and a large rectangle. These are two patterns that repeat themselves just over and over and over again throughout. Uh, just like the well, let me just do this from the beginning. In the Chamberlain methodology, I like to look at straight lines, cup formations, arch formations. There's a mix of one and two and one and three. This is one and three where it comes down sharply and then makes an H pattern, fails to take out, hold the left side low, and goes much deeper. Yeah, in the corner you can see, fails at a peak A, it goes and it takes out that low. Well, um, that's called the dreaded H because it can keep going down after that. And this is the very positive reverse Y pattern, green one, because if it takes out that left side high, it can go quite a bit higher. So those are three core patterns. At the same time, what I love to look at is, if I can just get, is, there are two types of rectangles. There's the long, narrow rectangle where something stays in a trading band. I'll show you the TLT in a minute. And it drives you nuts because it goes to the top of the range. You think it's going to break out, and then it turns around and goes down again. It goes to the bottom of the range. You think it's going to break down, and it turns around and goes up again. So that's the narrow rectangle and lasts a lot longer than your patience and very often a lot longer than your money because you tend to think you're going to trade it, and it just fools you instead of recognizing that there's a cap on the upside and a, and a base on the downside, and you're going to be trading in within that, number one. Number two is... And then I have a whole take a series of te uh, technical aspects that we can deal with in the long narrow rectangle. Remember, that's when we watched uh, ages ago copper breakdown. We've watched a whole bunch of things that apply to to this narrow rectangle. 
Then the large rectangle says, you've run all the way up, you've made a sharp pullback, and now either you're going to make an arch formation, that dreaded H, or you're going to make a cup formation, or you're going to pull back and make a lopsided gravy cup. In other words, it's not a cup because it's kind of either lopsided with the left side sharply lower, and then you move to the upside, or it's the just go down, 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 and then there's a sudden spike. We saw that in the E-mini uh, ten-minute chart. I'll show you in a little while um, that where it goes down, 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 and then it has a very quick spike to the upside. But this large rectangle says, watch out, because if you start to make higher highs and higher lows, you can have a rally that takes you to just under, exactly on, or just above the rectangle horizontal line high from the flagpole on the left. And then be careful, because then there's a bunch of other techniques you've got to watch for the halfway point of the, of the, of the rectangle, etc. But wait a minute. Why did I talk about it? Because look. In the one-minute chart, you made the arch formation, the dreaded H, after coming down, and you tested it, and you held beautifully. And then you start to see the technicals improve, and then it, with the nine crossed positive, and look what's happened. Higher highs and higher lows, but instead of just going to a peak D, it's continued up, and it's gone to alternate count E, F, slash B, because you've got to have an alternate, I don't want to go into that right now, an alternate count, right up against there. So you stalled just above, and now you've got this horizontal line that's like a magnet. Can it go higher? Can 4153.50 be taken out to the 4154? Yes, as we speak. So now you've got uh, a leg G to the upside, but I, I like to be a little careful. I'm calling this G a parallel G slash C. Why? Because the MACD is still very strong. It's making a little deflection up. That's good. Stochastic started to weaken a little bit, but it's still at 83%. On balance volume is good. And look at this gray line. That's the relative strength line. So, so far, this is really good action. We've gone, uh, we're at 41.45. The low today is 41.38. I would say uh, 26 points to the upside. Not bad, huh? on a day that's a really a more digestive day. So I said I'll speak to you about the, um, the rectangle formation. Look at this. Here is the 10 minute chart. And it goes lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, dun, 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 dun. and I drew in, I drew this in. I like to put an X where I think it's going to end. I'm over here when I'm drawing the X. I'm just way, way over here somewhere. Uh, wait, where was it? Uh, 414. Uh, this is the 10 minute chart. Oh, that's last night. So I'm, yeah, I, I'm over here at six o'clock in the morning. I was up and I drew all this in and I thought, and I'll put the X. Well, what happened is we got the new spike <clears throat> and we ran up and pulled back from a peak D. Remember, peak D is where other things can happen. There's your D goes quickly to an E and then we pull back. Wait a minute. There's a pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower or the A, uppercase A failure pattern. What happens is we've seen it almost every day this week. There's a big, on the news, 8.30 news, this was the 10 o'clock news. There's a big spike, and then that spike pulls back sharply, gives everything up. It looks like the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. So that's a failure pattern. Now what I've done is I circled in during the break. We were down at the 41.48 area. And I circled in the 200 period exponential moving average, which was a midpoint for the move up, cross it down, held for a little while, and then broke down. Now it's the magnet line. There it is. And I'm going to show you copper in a moment. What, how, why, why is it so important, the magnet line, the 200 period moving average? I, I, in fact, there was a period where I was about to, I, I discussed, I had a whole series of weeks. We were talking about this, Dave White and I, and the nine period moving average, and he made his own study, and he did some really good work on his own, uh, on his own parameters using the nine period exponential moving average. In the end, it turned out to be his usage was a little different to mine, and that's the way it should be. you you got to take something and then turn it into your own. That's the way, I mean, that's how you can go from a Haydn to a Mozart to a Beethoven to a Schubert. I and mean, that's the way these progressions historically work. I, you, you form a, some kind of a template, and then everyone expands on that. Well, that's great. So I've, I'm looking at the 200-peer moving average. I was about to get into it with Dave. 
obviously, I'll, well, I'll never do that. It's a terrible shame. Uh, anyway, and uh, so here we are. The 200 period moving average, and that was the target. I put a little yellow circle there, and we've gotten close to it. So I thought I'd show you a couple of things alive because this is the way we all learn. And if you don't think every single day I'm not learning, I, after thousands of, of, of these positions, um, absolutely. I love to learn. In fact, I love to experiment. Sometimes it costs me something, but I, if you, got, you, you have to put your, your money on the line. If you really want to learn, you, you have to do it live. I, uh, paper trading is fantastic to learn a technique, but that doesn't teach you about trading. All right, so we've got to a G slash C just above the uh, previous peak. Now we'll see if we're going to pull back. This is this is really good action, considering that we could have been down 450 points in the Dow instead of just down 200. It shows you how strong that nine period moving average over the 14 period moving average is, because it refuses to allow. Uh, the market just tank unless it's a really bad news event going on. And so far, it's just, hey, maybe a bit of free grace with you. That's fine. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, seeing you for this hour. And I'll be back in a couple of questions. If you want to the or on the Tiger YouTube, I'll take those. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's down 185. SP's down uh, 50. So my engineer, Al, wonderful engineer, uh, said to me, said to me uh, let's see, what did he say? He said, Basil, can you tilt the camera down a bit? So I, I, I did this and I did that and I did this and better or no, he just have you done anything? And then finally, I, I decided to put the chair just the way I usually do. But it reminded me years ago when I was a professional musician and I was conducting this orchestra, I stopped in the middle of, the, of this movement and I said, 
no, no, no. This is this is when Beethoven is walking in the forest, and uh, the, it was his favorite time of the day, four o'clock. And the the leaves between the leaves, the sun would be shining and get this splay of 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 light and shadow and light and shadow. And I suddenly hear from the back of the, of the room, and I'm sure it must have been a trumpet player because that's what trumpet players do. I hear, do I play louder or softer? So I said to uh, Al, do you want my head higher or lower? So um, that reminded me of that a long time ago. Oh, I just, that was great. I mean, all the, yeah, this is like, um, I, we, we went to uh, the Boston Ballet the other day. It's a contemporary ballet. But the write-up had this long story, and it, it had this thing about, uh, it, it was just this kind of feel-good stuff that people write now these days. And I just said, to, I, I, I said to my, oh my God, too many words. What's going to happen anyway? It turns out that yeah, for the first piece, it was too many words. It was very, very well done, but it was, it was kind of the same old same. The second piece where they took Debussy, at La Mer, and they uh, they danced to that. That was absolutely fantastic, I must say. So that first piece and the and the, the uh, write up to it was. Too many words, so here we go. Okay, too many words, what am I saying? I'm saying that within the context of the, 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 the very things I'm talking about, look, here's your pattern in the weekly chart of the Dow. It makes the H pattern. I have a rule with the H pattern that you've got two, I might make it three bars in which to get back into the rectangle after taking out the left side low. So the low of the week of the 23rd of December was 32,573. It rallies all the way up into the 30, um, high 33,000. Then it comes back down, takes it out. And the second week, it closes under it. And the third week. So now it's gone back into that rectangle. So it's used up the time. Then the second part of this rule, it's like a corollary. There's, a, there's another part to it. And the other part says, in the interim period, if you get the technical strengthening, it could start a brand new move to the upside, not just the buy signal or buy mode, because this weekly chart in the Dow is still, we've actually, we, for subscribers, we have the low of 2020, we still have that position in the Dow, and we have the low of October, we still have that position. I, we trade around it, we've, we've, we're still long, three times long, uh, on a trading position as well. So we are, um, I, I look at this as if to say, and maybe I'll do this right now, that the rectangle formation that we were looking at is exactly what I looked at in the, here we are, in the daily chart. And I said, we've taken out the halfway marker of this rectangle. If we do that again, watch out, because we could take out the 200 period moving average. Well, lo and behold, in the weekly chart, we're back into the rectangle and we're above the halfway market. That would be at 32,500 about, would be the, 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 the level and we're at 32,845. So, so far what we're looking at is the attack on this resistance line right here, this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. If the, if the weekly 200, sorry, if the weekly MACD, which is still negative, actually crosses positive next week on a closing basis, we could finally see a push above that, and that makes a deflection lower. If if there's a failure next week, that makes it really important. That's why I'm saying the close close today in another hour and thirty minutes, twenty minutes is going to be really important. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. We were talking about the rectangle formation. Well, look at this. Look at crude oil. Crude oil. This is the weekly chart. Let me just expand this a little bit. Here on the left is the weekly chart. You had a big rectangle. And um, I the, the the midpoint of the rectangle I changed a little bit only because at that particular point I felt it was important just to show something else. But really, this was the rectangle midpoint right here. The reason why I moved it before is because we had this inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle, and uh, uh, holding it's a weekly chart holding for any day above. Uh, 114 of the continuous contract price says that there's a good chance you're going to retest the high or get close to it and then we'll see what happens and that's exactly what happened then we broke down it isn't an arch formation but it's the inverted v-shape you're going from one point up 
And then back to that point, how do you deal with it? Well, we broke down and you had three bars that were underneath the low and then the fourth bar went up and it failed and it failed inside that rectangle. I, I took it away because it was starting to look messy, but I'll expand it just for the moment. We went back in it. Now we've fallen below it. And what have we done? So I was asked about five weeks ago, I said, someone asked me, this is a weekly chart, uh, what would I do? What, what, just do an analysis of crude oil. And what I said is, this high to that low, and I drew a rectangle in, and this rectangle that's forming says that there could be a technique that I call the Chapman Wave propeller shaft pattern. What happens is the blade of the, of the left side and the fulcrum can see the exact same price movement to the downside. And then you got to see what happens. Well, it went instead of to the 62 le 64 level that I, no, 62 level that I said was a possibility. It went to 64 and then rallied. Where did it stall? It stalled the right today on this rectangle. That's how important a rectangle can be right there. It's stalling right here. So if crude oil, it changes the pattern completely. If the MACD in the weekly chart starts to, uh, it's positive, but starts to increase sharply. If the on balance volume increases, and if the stochastic, which is only at 57, at any time, any day next week, if the uh, stochastic is running sharply with the price of crude oil above, I'd have to say 80, is it 80 to 53? If it can get to 84.30, to 85.20 any day next week. That says you're changing. You've, you've turned this into a basing platform and crude oil could then go quite a bit higher. So that's how I like to use the rectangle. But at the same time, there are other things to consider. Look, the 200 period moving average was in, it was support, support, then boom, resistance, 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 resistance. All of a sudden, it's like a magnet, and we try to pull away for, from it. So in the daily chart, the MACD is good. The stochastic is uh, at 94%. That's fabulous. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. The 9 is way above the 14, and the 9 has just crossed the 200. If the black 14 p moving average crosses the 200 uh, level, 85.60 to 87 will be here in a snap. Boom, just like that. So crude oil has this huge gap. For 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, for 12 days, it hasn't even gone close to breaking the low of 79, around number 79 on the 3rd of April in the continuous contract. If that gets broken, then watch 78. If we go back to 78, it says you could spend some time filling in the gap. But so far, crude oil is holding really well. Question that came in about XL. Oh, they, they, so there were three things I said. I've discussed those things as, as they apply to the markets. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the SMHs, the semiconductors are failing. They're not, they're not running there. They did fantastically. And NVIDIA, the star, the darling, has made a PF round number top twice at 280, round number highs uh, two weeks ago. And it's just taken out the left side low in this dreaded H pattern. I have to watch that for the week. We saw very strong next seat. I'll be a pizza. I'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, folks, Spouse Chapman here, and this is my second hour. My first one was 10 o'clock to 11, where I do the Tiger Technicians Hour. My service is the opening call. So here's NVIDIA and uh, made a round number 280 high on the 3rd of April and it made a round number 200 and oh, well, well, what happened? Uh, 280 high on the 3rd and the 4th and now it's pulled back. And that makes 280, the round number, really important because at any time in the next week, if there is a spike above uh, 280, it's negated that as resistance. It's almost like a magnet. But I have the pattern that I'm talking about just a moment ago. Look, the mag let me move this over to this is the daily. Yeah, this is the daily chart. The, the 9 was way above the 14. The MACD was good, but just turning down. The stochastic was really good. It was up in the 85 or so percent area. And then look what happened. All of a sudden, very quickly, it turned down. But the 9 has not yet crossed negative. It's taken. Look how long it's taken to do that. And that's what I'm saying about the Dow. If it's going to turn down, it's going to turn down over a period of next week. Maybe uh, uh, rallies and can't get very much higher. And then it starts to turn down. I'm talking about the Dow. When I say that, I also mean the S&P, the Qs, etc. But the Qs also relate to the semiconductors. And NVIDIA is one of the leaders in the semiconductors. But the weekly chart has a, a leg C. Now, I had a choice. I could have used what I call a phantom peak. I haven't found any necessity right now. 230.20 uh, was the high February, the week of February the 10th. Uh, and 230.49 was the next week. It is so close that I could have said that could be a phantom peak, like a peak C, but it's not real because it didn't, it wasn't lower high. It was just fractionally higher. But then it did it twice at 238.88 on the 20, week of the 24th of Feb and 238, 239.00, 12 cents higher. So I have two, and I have two instances of potential round number highs, and we're going to a, a level that I think is getting toppy. In my, the back of my mind, I might do this in real life, but most of the time I just say, don't, don't, don't do it just yet. There's no need for it just yet. We could still have a, so many times you do a phantom peak and then it still goes to D. So I'm saying I'm treating this as a peak C. If there's just a mild pullback and here's your support in the 258 area, and that says if I, normally I would do this and put a little X in there and say, based on this particular work, by the, and then name the date, by the, right there, that'll be April the 21st. By the 21st, we should be testing 
um, 253. I mean, that's a big ask, right? That's, that means that we really have a big sharp pullback. All right, so with that said, I'm just going to go to right here. We have Mike in Ormond Beach. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, Basil. I'm doing great. I'm looking at the uh, the dollar, dollar sign DXY. Yes. And it looks like we made a double bottom, and it looks like we have a bullish engulfing candle so far on the daily chart. And my question is, is there anything you can see that would tell us that this is just going to be a, a very short-term bounce or if it could be uh, the beginning of another, you know, decent move up? maybe like to 105 or something like that. So let me go back. Since I'm, I'm trying to treat this as a live trading session, which is kind of what we love to do around here, uh, let me just show you something very important. I'm going to go to the E-mini again, and I'm going to go to the 10-minute chart. And you will see that in, oh, so what do we always expect in the, in the chat wave as a buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode and it should go to at least a D. So the one minute chart just went to your peak D right there, uh, D. And the 10 minute chart, and what I wanted to point out is look at the pink nine period moving average went across negative roundabout just before 11 o'clock this morning. Only mm -hmm. in the last uh, 10 minutes, has it crossed green and it went all the way down. It took all that time to turn around to the upside. So what I want to do, I'm using that now as an example. We're on, uh, Mike wanted to know about the, the double bottom. Well, 100.82 was, was the low of the 3rd of February. That wasn't necessarily, um, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so what happened is it ran back up again to peak ape. I should also mention subscribers have been long the dollar since 2018, and we've run it all the way up to the 121 area and all the way down again, and then back up again, uh, and we have taken some money off, but I've kept it because I think the dollar is going to tell us a huge story later on this, this year. So in the meantime, the price time, that's this, this bar symmetry that I'd love to look at in the dollar it's uh, it's two two days late, so if you go right. to the low that was made, the high that was made on the eighth of March <clears> at 105.88 at PD with a Doji candle, and it was exactly the um, left side right side price time match that I chosen to a different midpoint, going on the way up, and stalled right at that same level. And these double bottoms and double tops have been potent for the last year, as you know, as we've been looking at all these different charts. And that says that the move that we had going down here, which should have made the low on the 11th, has made the low actually yesterday was pretty much 100.85. So it missed it by three cents. So it missed it by uh, one day. Today's the second day. It went to a slightly lower low. Uh, the lower low is um, 100.79. So we've uh, 79, three cents lower than the low of the February, uh, February the 3rd, all the way to the March high. So... Now I look at the, the MACD. The MACD is deflected lower, but it's very narrow. It could very easily move up, but it hasn't yet. The stochastic mm -hmm. has reversed from rallying, and it's now 22%. That's not very good. The nine-period moving average has a this is the this is the daily chart has a long way to go to cross over. 102.08 is the 14 period moving average, and the pink nine is at 101.84. So I'd have to go, I love to go just step by step. And all I can say is, I've been talking about this for a couple of days, saying, was there a chance that the dollar forms some kind of just a tradable, maybe even just a tradable low as gold makes uh, some kind of a top? And here's gold. This is a continuous contract of gold. It made this top at, um, I can't say a top. It's made a high, a lower high than yesterday. The continuous contract is 2061.6. And you can see the MACD is just turned down a little bit. The stochastic is down under 80%. On balance volume turned down. But that nine is still way above the 14. So it's the same as mm -hmm. I'm looking at in the, in the, in the Dow. The Dow is going to take a while to come and cross negative. It's not that it can't. I'm just saying it will take a while or just really bad news. And the dollar to move up might take a little bit longer. But I think it's starting the basing period. And you can see. Now, another thing I look at, as you as you might remember, I look at a cup and 
the cup and handle, one of my least favorite patterns, it's almost like a head and shoulders that by the time you recognize the darn thing, it's already too late. So you've got to recognize these things early. And what I've done is I'd already drawn on the weekly chart of the dollar a, a dashed line to say, are we going to be able to measure the low of 100.82, uh, 100 the low of the week of the 3rd of February, to whatever it is that retests the low? And we're right there now. So that says the stochastic, the MACD is a little bit better, but it's still negative. If you look at the, histo the histogram, these vertical lines on the MACD, you can see that it went positive just briefly, and now it's negative, but it's better than it had been. The stochastic, if it turns up from here, is much higher than it was at the low that was made. So if, you, uh, if you're looking to see what will happen, I'll, I'm going to choose the other currencies. Do you want to hold on a moment and I'll be back? Yes, I can hold. Yeah. Okay, we've got Mike and Ormond Beach. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at the dollar. We're looking at, you can look at the other currencies and we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. So, Basil Chapman sitting in here. This is the last segment we've got. And we're actually looking, this is very interesting. We've got Mike and Ormond Beach. So, Mike, the euro dollar has made this cup and a handle pattern. And that very often portends a kind of a sideways move. And this, it breaks decisively up in 1.09. It really needs to get to the 1.12 area to say, hey, I'm on my way uh, back into the 1.14. And the USD JPY, which is the uh, yen, uh, at this particular 
Did I type it in the wrong place? Yes, I did. Uh, USD, let me just do that real quick. USD, JPY. Okay. Uh, yes, it, it's, it's stuck at the 200 period moving average. So unless the yen actually starts to move from 133 right now, next week hits 135.50 and or higher, I think we have to look at the Dow and say, okay, uh, look at the dollar and say, okay, dollar, tell us what you're going to do next because you've done everything that you need to do. And now there's a chance that you use this as a base, the whole 100 area to 99 as a base to rally. And by it has to be speed is of the essence. So if the dollar starts to move into the one, 102.80 to 103.30 area anytime next week, that says maybe now we have a bit of a breather in the general market and maybe that mm -hmm. includes uh, gold. So I'm just looking at this say the homework I do this weekend is going to be really important. This week was a very important week for many reasons to see what kind of residual strength there is. The strength is still there, how it unfolds over the next few days. And I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. If the Dow, either Monday or Tuesday, is uh, early next week, is able to hit 34,000, uh, 300s, that's fabulous action. And if it slides, it's got the 33,000. I'd even put it down to uh, 500 to 300, major support that needs to hold on the shorter term. So we're right on the cusp. We'll see what happens with the dollar. This is the time the dollar could bounce a little bit. Hope that helps you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Thank you for calling. Thank you, Bob. So, folks, I'm handing over to Jacob. Jason and Dom's not out, and Jacob's going to be there. Uh, two things I want you to do, just to remind yourself. That this market is evolving, it's trying to decide how to, to work its way through everything that's going on. But there are some sectors that act well, as well as some that are bad. Have a great weekend. Check.